Sheikh Asim, we want standardized answer for any individual who may push the following of one madhab blindly while excluding and ignoring everything else. What can we say to any person who says, no, you must follow the madhab or the opinion of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah or Imam Shafi rahimahullah or Malik or Imam Abu Hanifa. What is that one answer that we can say to all of them, which if they were sincere, would satisfy them? Simply, to go back to the sources, to the fundamentals of any proper Muslim. Ask any individual, Akhi, who are you following? The Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet or XYZ. Usually they will come with the argument of, okay, isn't Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal following the Quran and Sunnah? Right. So I'm following him. So no, actually, you're following his understanding. But Allah Azza wa tells you in black and white in the Quran. The question that you'll be asked on the Day of Judgment, what did you respond to the messenger who came to you, the Prophet You're not going to be asked, what did Imam Malik or his students say, or what did Imam Hanifa and his two students say. You will be asked about your response to the Prophet And this is the question you're going to be asked in your grave. What did you do with what you knew? What did you do with following the Prophet ﷺ. Who is your Lord? Who is your Prophet? And what is your religion? And we were going to discuss, we said, also a standard answer which we can give in regards to those who are overly attached to the one opinion of the Imam. And so perhaps you can begin, Brother McCarthy, on this issue. Inshallah. Before we go into that, I think we need to discuss a very important issue. And we, and the, it's interesting how many topics come up about this. It's a very interesting topic about the schools of thought. And there's so much to talk about. But we need to focus on finding the cure for a problem that we have in the Ummah today. And that is that we have basically two extremes. The true, true students of knowledge, they're always in the middle. And the correct path in Islam, wherever you look at anything, it's always in the middle. And we have some Muslims, even some who might be students of knowledge, who absolutely blind follow the madhab. Like we mentioned, the guy who said, I don't care about the hadith, I'm going to follow what I was taught in my madhab. And they, they don't care. And then you have another extreme, which actually has a form of hatred almost, if not a serious hatred for the imams. Yeah, I've come across a lot yeah, of that. You've seen this. Very strange. And they actually look at the person who follows one of the imams as being like a mubtadir, as being someone who's an innovator in their religion. This is serious. So we have these two extremes. I think we need to talk about these, this is because we want to solve this problem. We want to, the ummah to come to the, the middle path on this. Right. This is a very important topic. Because now, when you look at the major scholars of Islam, who studied, let's look at, for example, Imam Nawi, Imam Ibn Hajar, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Did any of them come up not studying a madhab? Initially, they must have had a madhab. All of them initially had it. So this was the proper methodology and being a student of knowledge. They studied these madhabs, all of them. You're not going to find Imam Ibn Abdul Barr, major scholars of Islam. They studied the madhab. And he... You then they left the madhab? madhab or... No, no, once they start off studying the madhab, oh. this is the first step, and then they start to study after that, obviously, more madhabs, and to see the difference of opinions, and they would take that was correct and leave that was not correct. Like mujtahid? Yeah, yeah, but the he, even the student of knowledge, as we mentioned, who can filter, he can do that. But the point is, is that all of them took the path of studying the madhab. So it's nothing wrong, as we need to make it clear here. There's nothing wrong with studying a madhab. There's nothing wrong with studying it. What's wrong is the blind following. So we don't want to be the extreme where you say you can't study method because it's not the methodology of our scholars. You're going to try to get somewhere without going the proper way. All of the scholars went this way, so why would we choose another path? And that's why you find so many students of knowledge who try to go other than that path. Their knowledge is, it's, it's all mixed up, it's everywhere. But the ones who went the path of the scholars, they studied the madhab, and then after they learned it, they started to study other madhabs as well, look here and there. That was good for them. But we don't want to stay there at the blind following. You'll find people who have been studying 20, 30 years, and they will not leave what their imam said. And this is also very dangerous. So we need to always follow that middle path in all aspects of Islam. I think education solves some of these problems. Yeah. I remember that some people told me that who lived in, in Mecca, that uh, I think 70 years ago or so, they said that uh, at the time of Salat al-Dhuhr, you would hear the Adhan, and uh, one person from Maliki, would make the Adhan and only the Maliki people would pray. Was it that close to that 70 years ago? Or yes, it's approximately. Almost 70 years. Four, four, just four 70 manhaj. years. And you see, nowadays, I, I still remember the Haram 30 years ago. 
nothing like this happened. So in a very short time, this has changed. And this is in Mecca. The most, yes, the most sacred place in the world. And now nobody, nobody looks at that. You see and the difference this today. Nobody... Changed, yes. And I think the reason that this changed is the spread of correct knowledge. And I think even these two episodes that we have done about this topic will affect many people in the world, inshallah, and will make them try to look for, yes. And I like what you said that when we are asked in our graves about the three questions, who is your Lord, what is your religion, and who is the prophet who was sent to you? You your imam, is that in that one? Yeah, this is exactly what is I wanted to know. So here, there's no question that will be asked, who is your imam, or what's your mother? Every Muslim should be aware of that. You're not going to be asked about this. These are only the three questions that you're going to be asked. So why worry about the issue of an imam now or a madhab now? So I should focus on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here other than focusing on other Abu Mus'ab. I remember one of the scholars of Ahl sunnah was using very simple techniques to convince those people who would say that I am a Shafi'i or I am Hanbali or I am... He used to say that I have a simple question for you. If you answer it, you will know me. Was the Prophet ﷺ Shafi'i? Was the Prophet Hanbali? Was, and the answer all the time is no and no and no. And so if the Prophet ﷺ is none of these, so why do you want to be a follower of someone? And you have the original one that you can follow very easily. And if we the go Prophet back to the, to the early history of Islam, it was something you have to do. If you go astray, if you don't follow one of these Imams, it's back to the issue of is, is it wajib? Do we have to do it? What about the early Muslims before the time of these Companion. four Imams? What about them? Were they all sinners? Were they all astray? With this? Obviously, they didn't have it. And as Sheikh Asim mentioned before, there was a lot of schools of thought. We have had any, the same amount of knowledge, but the, the students they have are the ones who spread it. The point is, is that, and he found his mind, we want to focus on this. And these are some of the greatest scholars of Islam. We have to have love as Ahl Sunnah, as people of the Sunnah, for Imam Abu Hanifa. We have to have love for Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Imam Ahmed. And we have to have hatred for those who hate them. Because they were the ones who strove night and day to spread the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. And we do have it. Yeah, we have, have, have the have love it. for all the All of them. No, no, no difference. We don't, and he, you'll find people, and he, it, it came to the time, not just, the, you mentioned about the, the different jama'at, the different groups who used to pray in the haram. Even the marriage. You remember these stories that you were not allowed to marry if you were Hanifi to marry from oh, a yeah. Shafi. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, these days, as you say, Alhamdulillah, with education and the more authentic knowledge that is spreading, Alhamdulillah, these things are starting to doubt in the ummah. This is good. That doesn't mean we want to put away the, these madhahs. So we need them. We're not going to get to understand the Qur'an soon without them. But also, alhamdulillah, we need to continue on this path we're going with not blind following them or making it a war between ourselves if you follow a different school of thought than me.